We turn to the story very much on the minds of parents and students in New York City. The status of schools. Campuses are still open across the city, at least for tomorrow. And that's because the city is staying below the threshold, a 3% positivity rate that would trigger a shutdown of schools within 24 hours. Today's number, 2.7%. So it means more watching and waiting for families really left in limbo across the five boroughs. News 4's Andrew Sipp begins our team coverage tonight in the East Village. Andrew? Right, David, at this school and at hundreds of schools like it across the city, there's no question people were a bit surprised. They've been warned by the mayor to get ready for today to be closed. It opened up. They were picking up their kids after school. Maybe this would be the last day of school, but they learned. Schools will still be open for at least one more day. I'm hoping that it stays open because it's necessity for me because I have to go to work. Parents like Jackie Roman holding on to hope these days that the city's average COVID-19 positive percentage stays below 3%, the threshold the mayor has identified for automatic closure. We're sticking to that threshold, and I believe there's still a chance to fight back this disease and keep our schools open. City Hall had warned parents to prepare for a Monday closure, but the weekend didn't produce the COVID spike that many feared. There's no reason to close the schools, at least not at this point. But health officials caution the weekend often produces lower numbers with fewer people getting COVID tests. And the days ahead may still force the closure of all 1,600 city schools where 300,000 kids have been learning in school for the last seven weeks. There's been such minimal spread in school that the governor and the mayor now both say the threshold should be higher next time. Doable if parents and teachers approve. Now we know that schools are actually safer than the surrounding community, and we should rethink that 3%. But you have to get them there. The conversation we're having with the state is how to quickly come back and what it's going to take. What nobody really knows at this hour is whether the numbers somehow might have plateaued on Friday over the weekend or whether they're still going up. And if so, if they hit 3% sometime this week, then the mayor insisted today that schools will close until that number drops again. Live in the East Village, Andrew Siff, News 4 New York. Andrew, thank you. We have to get to New Jersey this afternoon where the numbers are just staggering. In the last four days, the state has seen more than 14,000 new cases. It's actually 5% of New Jersey's total cases of the entire pandemic, and the positivity rate now above 9%. So today, Governor Murphy lowered the limit on both indoor and outdoor gatherings. Indoor capacity drops to 10 people now. Outdoor capacity is being cut to 150. Let's get out to News 4's Brian Thompson continuing our team coverage from Hoboken. Brian. Yeah, and that executive order aimed at just 10 people inside is aimed directly at Thanksgiving. Health officials now worried about an extremely risky holiday season. Test results from across the state the past week or so has led to a startling statistic Governor Murphy can't ignore. One in 20, in other words, of all of our cases from, from the first one on March 4th has come from just the past four days. It is the extended family Thanksgiving dinners that have officials so worried. Relatives coming in from all over, close quarters, laughing, drinking, letting their guard down. State Health Commissioner Judy Persichelli warning. Guests should avoid direct contact, including handshakes and hugs with others outside their household. And schools in Hoboken will shut down for a full week after Thanksgiving and go to virtual learning in case holiday gatherings did spread the virus. The governor saying, We're urging everybody to keep their Thanksgiving plans as small as possible because we know that indoor gatherings and in homes are particularly dangerous places for COVID-19 to spread. Hoboken's mayor is on board with the 10-person inside limit, but frustrated by the highest one-day number yet this weekend. He is signing an executive order today aimed at restaurants and bars in his city. Require any uh, restaurant or bar to have people sign into the establishment so that we can strengthen the contact tracing process we already have in place. One other fire on the governor's plate, youth holidays. hockey. We want to say very specifically, hockey is in our crosshairs, okay? So I'm not sure why, but we are hearing more than anecdotal, more than here or there, a lot of non-compliance, including by parents. 
Now, if you were wondering there is anything that could possibly be opened up, eased on restrictions, the governor made it clear today that he is taking no steps to reopen anything for the time being. Live in Hoboken, Brian Thompson, News 4 New York. Brian, thank you for the latest there. And we also want to talk about a concerning situation emerging at New Jersey nursing homes. Health officials reported 24 new COVID outbreaks at nursing homes today. There are now 241 outbreaks at long term care facilities. That's across the Garden State. And officials are pleading with anyone who has a loved one in a facility not to bring them home during the holidays. As we do here uh, daily, we're also keeping an eye on the situation in Connecticut. Governor Lamont just started giving an update there. Earlier today, he asked President Trump to extend the National Guard support through the end of June. It's set to expire at the end of this year, which would be December. We're going to monitor the governor's news conference. We'll update you with any new information as we get it, Dave. Some good news, perhaps, about COVID-19, at least encouraging news, came about another vaccine. Moderna announced this morning that analysis from its phase three trial shows the vaccine's efficacy rate is nearly 95 percent. The data showed that 11 of the participants suffered severe cases of COVID-19, but they were all in the placebo group. The company's CEO appeared on CNBC this morning. We are very excited about what this could mean for patients, and we're working very closely to Operation Warp Speed to get this in the hands of uh, Americans as soon as, of course, the FDA has the ability uh, in the coming weeks to review uh, the file under the EUA. This comes on the heels of Pfizer's announcement last week that its vaccine candidate is also more than 90% effective. Both companies plan to submit their vaccines now for emergency youth use authorization with the FDA in the coming weeks. Wall Street certainly liked this news. It rallied today on the hopes that the vaccine can fuel an economic rebound. You can see the Dow close at a record high. Taking a live look at the big board, you can see the Dow is up now more than 400 points, approaching that 30,000 mark. And here's a perhaps less formal but solid indicator about where we are with coronavirus right now. All city MD locations are closing 90 minutes earlier because of the long lines for COVID testing. In an email to patients, CDMD says that for months, doctors and staff have been seeing patients well after hours, and they've reached the point of sacrificing their own safety and health. Natalie.